What is going on, internet? I hope you're doing well. Obviously, I'm doing fantastic because I have someone in my kitchen. And that someone is the Lord of Laughs, Mr. Tyler Levko. Hi. What's up, dog? I'm not doing well. Today on Someone's In My Kitchen, we're making uh, something I've never done before. We're combining macaroni and cheese with spanakopita. Mac and cheese, spanakopita. Mac and cheese, Wikipedia. <laughs> the origin story of who invented mac and cheese, which I don't even know who it was. It was, but. It was uh, Ricardo Mac. He owned a cheese farm in Belarus. They had a lot of extra potatoes. Essentially, a spanakopita is a uh, pocket of phyllo dough filled with spinach and feta cheese. But we're not, we're not doing regular spanakopita. We're gonna stuff that with homemade mac and cheese that has bacon in it. Because obviously bacon makes everything better. Right, dude? It's true. Sponsored. All right, the first step that we're gonna do is chop up our bacon into bits and throw it in a pot and cook it until it's probably around four on the Josh Elkin bacon cooking scale. Yeah, that's four. We have water boiling. We're gonna, we're gonna take this elbow macaroni over here. We're gonna throw it in this pot of boiling water. Do you know why they call it elbow macaroni? Um, yes. Why? <laughs> um. All right, so our elbow macaroni is in. Here's a little trick to learn how your noodles are ready. You wanna throw them against the wall, and if they stick, they're good to go. Ready? Good to go. Good to go. So you wanna extract your noodles from the water, and set them aside, and then we're gonna make our roux. Cool, what's a roux? It's the only roux I know is Roux McClanahan, greatest actress of our generation. Also, what's water? It's a combination of flour and butter, and then we're gonna add some cream and some cheese. It's basically the foundation of any really good sauce. Food for your brain, bro. It's a win-win. really is. It is. Good okay. job. Put her there. All right, take it easy, buddy. Take care. Cooking is like 5% knowing what you're doing and 95% stirring. Yeah. This is the most cheesy mac I've ever made. Now we're gonna add this bacon. We're not making traditional mac and cheese, Ty. We're trying to make mac and cheese that's gonna hold up in spanakopita form. You know what I'm saying? No, but I believe you. Instead of eating your entire mac and cheese, I know it might be hard, especially if you're recreating this at home, but set it aside, melt a half a cup of butter, and what you wanna do is take one single sheet of the phyllo dough, and then paint it with butter. Then you wanna repeat that with two other sheets until you have three buttered phyllo dough sheets ready to go. You wanna cut it into three, and then we're gonna start making our spanakopita. You wanna take a little bit of your mac and cheese mixture and put it at one end of the spanakopita. Then you're gonna take the corner and you're gonna flip it over. Keep folding till you end up this triangle pocket. Of deliciousness. How good does that look? So good. Right? All right, one last step before we throw it in the oven and then it's time, Ty. We're gonna cover these in a little bit more melted butter and then throw them in the oven for 25 minutes. That's far too long. You didn't tell me about that. It's okay, we have this big bowl of mac and cheese that we can consume in the meantime. You're right. Well, Ty, we just made mac and cheese spanakopita or spanakopita depending on, you know, how you say it. I don't even know how to say it, but if you know how to say it, please say it in the comments below. It's like tomato potato. Thanks for stopping by and being someone in my kitchen, bud. Thank you for having me in your kitchen. Yeah, you guys could uh, follow Tyler on all things social media, at T Lemko. Follow me or I'll follow you. Mmm. No, you can't. You can't, you just, no.
Yeah. The mac and cheese is so thick, I just broke my spoon stirring it. 